was speaking to a Rotary Club not so long ago, and a woman came up to me after and said, oh, I went to 23 and me, and I don't have 8.4. And I, I said, that's great, because of course it is great, and it's not, well, you tell, what, what is that, what's the meaning of that? The APOE uh, test is relatively inexpensive, relatively simple. Yeah, so that's a really good question. Um, so basically, it's what we call a risk gene, and that means that you're at risk for a disease, but there's no guarantee you're going to get it. And more importantly is that your risk is really um, only increased over about a, I mean, it's going to sound a little funny, 10 to 15 year period of your life, okay? So um, if you get, certainly if you get past a certain age, around 80, that gene doesn't mean anything anymore uh, for Alzheimer's disease risk. So it's, it's a risk, and uh, I think what we do with that information is important if we have specific treatments. And I think right now, the most important thing to, to know is that it doesn't help anyone in your office, my office, I do that blood test for everybody um, who walks through the door. I will not be able to tell who, who's going to develop a dementia in the next five years if they're completely normal. I just won't, that won't be helpful. It may be helpful in certain conditions where there's an atypical feature of the dementia, but now that we have these imaging things, I think its utility is becoming less. So it's a risk factor, and I'm sure that many of you understand that through, uh, for example, well, I don't want to go down that road. Never mind. <laughs> I think sometimes it's worth just remembering that risk factors are defined looking at thousands and thousands yes. of people as a cohort, but then to take that data and say, what does it mean for you personally? I was struck when you asked the question of the audience, if there were uh, some kind of, of test that told you something meaningful about your risk for Alzheimer's, one of the questions I'd want to know is, can you tell me when? Because if the answer is, your risk between 60 and 75 is really high, as opposed to your risk by the time you're 99, I might feel differently about, oh, I'll take my chances. Yeah, that we don't have anything, including the amyloid test, that tells us when, okay? And uh, there's just a little nuance to this study, and that is that uh, people who have this amyloid in their brain can um, pass on for other diseases and be completely normal, and, or pass on from old age and be completely normal. So we have to be careful about how we interpret this result in normal people. Yes, it puts you at greater risk, there's no doubt about that. But the exact risk, the timing, all these questions that Bill is asking me are really important, unanswered 